For Gaza, which is the Field Guides Association of Southern Africa, have just hosted Safari Guide of the Year 2022. As we can see, these were the competitors or the uh, participants before the event. Um, I think some of them were just as happy after the event. And now I'm joined by the man whose idea this was originally back in 2011. Um, he's one of the judges. He's also the co-owner of Africa Direct. And that is Mike Carantonis. Mike, welcome to you. Thanks for having me, David. I appreciate it very much. It's only a pleasure. Mike, it's come and gone. It's like a birthday. We wait a whole year and then it's over. And now we've got to wait for next year. But the reason for this chat, sort of a debrief almost, is to find out your thoughts on this baby of yours that you started back in 2011 and that has come such an incredible way. It's, it's now almost a teenager and it's growing exponentially. It's getting better and better every year. Yeah, I think it was um, very much a vision that I had, you know. I didn't know that it was going to do this well this quickly. I mean, I know that uh, when I say this quickly, we know how quickly life goes. It's yeah. 10 years plus, but it feels like a blink of an eye. And at this last uh, Safari Guard of the Year, which we've just finished, seeing the uh, Deputy Minister of Tourism, seeing the uh, film crew, the media, the amount of sponsors and stuff. So, <clears throat> I mean, Michelle from Fagasa, as I mentioned uh, earlier today in some email correspondence that I was sending out, is she's definitely the steam, the head of the steam train that runs this and builds it up and makes the connections. Um, so all of the credit to her and her team and all the sponsors for getting it there. But <clears throat> I think it just makes me happy to see that it was a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think, uh, um, you know, it wouldn't go anywhere no matter how hard anybody tried. If it was a bad idea, it didn't um, have weight or credibility behind it for in terms of the purpose behind it. So when there were a lot of the happy participants and finalists at the at the beginning going from nervous to happy and at the end of it being moved and changed and spoiled and um it yeah i think not necessarily the growth is a, a, a huge thing but i think another way to put it that i see which i'm grateful for is that it's actually gaining good traction you know, and when something has good traction, it moves. And this is definitely moving in the right direction, you know, in parallel with that growth. So I'm very happy. This is what was going to be my next question to you is having the deputy minister there, does it add gravitas to to the event and to your to your vision of where this event can go from here? Very much so. I think it, it, it's great credit having them there. Um, and, uh, you know, it's difficult to get feedback from someone like that. <laughs> but, you know, the words that were spoken while we were there, you know, words are one thing and they were great and really positive from what he had seen. But to have follow up from you know, that department in the years to come will be in the pudding, I guess. Yeah. But we had, yeah, I think great feedback, great words, great presence. And it was an indicator of where this is going, has come from and should be going. You know, when we, I was really impressed with the weight we had at that competition. And uh, it, it is within the vision of what's possible for that competition and where it should be going. So, yeah, very happy. The, the other thing, and I know we discussed this uh, when I chatted to you before the event, the finalists this year seemed to get on like a house on fire. They really and truly did. And although they were competing with one another, the camaraderie between the five of them is what shone out for me and what made the event so very special this year, as opposed to the previous two that I've worked on. 
Yeah, they were a very special group. Um, and I think the common denominator or the, the undercurrent amongst all the guards, which there's always really good camaraderie with um, the finalists. But like, I think number one, the thing that connects them is the type of person who they all are. And that originates from them not being egotistical and being able to, and also being mature. And that is by putting their hands up, you know, yeah. and they, they're looking for constructive criticism. Um, they stand up in front of the entire guarding fraternity and they, they're not, they just want to grow and learn yeah. and uh, get exposed. And when all of them, they are all there because they all did the above. Yeah, and that creates a common denominator within a personality of each of them that connects them already. And then quite a, a funny thing is, you know, that one thing that connects everybody quite quickly is fear. And uh, <laughs> like, I'll, for example, you'll have six uh, guests in the back of my car and they all, you know, three different couples from around the world, different parts, and they're not quite talking that much. And all it takes for them to see their first lion at 30 meters away and they get a little fearful, that, are we okay here? Is, and then when you leave the sighting, they're all chatting like big mates. <laughs> and then it's the same, you know, the, the guards who put their hands up come there and there's competition, mm. there's exposure, there's judges, they are clearly quite nervous and a little scared, you know, and what's going to happen, what they, we're going to throw at them. They're going to be on television, all of this, and they, they don't want to disappoint anybody. And that fear connects them, yeah. that they're all standing on that same platform. And But, yeah, with, with your question, particularly, yeah, they were a great bunch of guys, very mature, very humble, um, very good. So, yeah, it was a special group of, of guys this year. It was really nice. And not only did they get along with each other, they got along with everybody at the competition. True enough. And I have to say, although I tried to win the, the hospitality um, uh, category, I, I failed miserably because Nico yeah. outshone me. Even though I took around snacks every night, I wasn't even considered. Well, I must say you were very impressive. Everybody was very impressed with your hospitality skills. <laughs> but next year we'll actually put you in as number six for that okay. particular category. <laughs> yeah, for the other see how you fare. <laughs> yeah, fair enough, Mike. Thank you for yeah. that. Um, you, you mentioned one thing that I think came out very clearly in this, and I think going forward in their careers, not only will their participation in Safari Guide of the Year 2022 be a milestone for them. All of them were as humble as I've ever seen human beings. There was no ego. Um, and as you say, everybody put their hands up. And as you say, they're, they're being judged by giants in the industry. Yourself, uh, Juan, James, Lucas, um, people who who they look up to and and who I suppose they are scared of in a way because they don't know what you're going to be doing, you know that single mouse track because the mouse only had three legs and half a tail that you that gets pointed out to them is is all part of that sort of adrenaline that keeps them going and that makes them want to do better. Mm. Yeah, so. I don't, yeah, I don't necessarily think that they fear us, but, um, you know, they, <clears throat> they want to do well and that fear of not doing well um, is, uh, is sort of very apparent and, but it is, it's nerves, but yeah, there are definitely some giants with us, which is, uh, I enjoyed having them around and also I aspire to, to the likes of James and, um Juan as well so um it's it's a great they are all humble which is a great character of all of them but it is a very humbling experience yeah for you know I came straight from safari guard of the year into 
uh, collecting guests for four nights and mm. which I've just finished and you know just sitting at the back of each of those contestants game drives I was learning stuff and mm. we were sharing things so the more we get together in in sort of on platforms like this the more everyone grows yeah everyone individually personally in the industry the guiding uh, stature of a profession as a career it, it's it's such a center of growth mm. and it's um yeah and i take a leaf out of their hat and they can take whatever they want out of ours and yeah it's great it's a good place to be with like-minded people who are all very good at what they do where do you see 2023 going safari so guide of the year 2023 how can you ramp this up well i'm not sure really um i think michelle and myself and Jean and James you know and Harvey we we all sit down we were absent one of our uh, absent one giant with Alan Hewitt uh, mm. this year which was sad hopefully have him come in as well and then just reflect as we're doing now and brainstorm and see what we come up with but I will say at the at the safari guide of the year this year with it being as big as it was it was really such a a vibe at the event mm. and there's lots of people I did also have a, a thought to myself where it didn't matter if there were film crews and um, great places to stay and whatever it is the safari guide of the year would still be an incredible section of the year for our industry mm. if there were 20 of us in a forgotten place in the middle of the bush, you know, letting it out and having that interaction sort of lead towards blossoming, you know, mm. in whatever capacity. And you do with whatever it is you want to on social media afterwards, just as long as we have a good core group of people and we have our um, purpose and vision in place and not have it skewered then it will always be a success so but i'm actually not quite sure i think it's a great question that i'll definitely take through to our board you know as, as such which is the judging panel and um, see which of the sponsors are still willing to join us and um yeah and then we'll take it from there there's venues there's participants there's um but someone might come up with a great idea. You know, everybody went from the surreal bubble of our favorite happy place of the year and got dropped off into the workplace immediately. So <laughs> yeah. we just, you know, we, we're coming down from that sort of euphoric quintessential mm. time in the bush with each other where it's, uh, like I said, with like-minded people and great fun. And yeah, the hamster needs to take a breather <laughs> yeah. and focus on some on some work for a little while. But I am really looking forward to um, meeting up with everybody that's uh, involved, you know, that our roots are deep in the Safari Guide of the Year and ask that exact question. What's up for next year and how are we going to ramp it up? Do we want to ramp it up? We'll the, see. How... how I don't want to put you on the spot, but you know that's what I what I tend to do. So it's a double-edged question. The first one is Cameron Pierce as Safari Guide of the Year. What a, yeah. a really, really nice man. Good choice. Very much so. Yeah. I I did not know his, I have to admit that when coming into this year's event, I done no work on the backstories to the guide. So I didn't know their qualifications. And I specifically did that so I wasn't in awe of, of how many SKS um, uh, uh, qualifications they had or anything like that. But what said it all for me was when one of the bushwise guys who was taking us on a drive somewhere said, you know, I, got a, I suffered from PTSD when Cameron got on my vehicle because he's just assessed me for SKS birding. And I went, 
hang on a second, but he's a participant. How can he do SK, uh, be an assessor? And then you realize that underneath that exterior beats a very serious guiding heart. And uh, again, very humble, um, very self-effacing and a really nice man to be around. Very much so. All of the contestants this year um, came with very high pedigrees. Um, there's a lot of qualifications under their belt and a lot of experience and time behind them. So, which is another testament to, like you say, their humble nature. Mm. They, you have no idea unless you go scratch around on the assessors forums or, you know, do some mm. investigating. No, they're very good. They're very well qualified. And, and they're of a very high caliber. So yes, he, he is a Cameron, as with all of them, he's a perfectionist and he works very hard. Yeah. And I think he'll be a great industry. ambassador for both the industry and for Safari Guide of the Year, which all of them yeah, to date have, so. have been. And the yeah. other question, and just to, to round off, and thank you very much for giving me time, Mike. I know that it's precious no to problem. you. Um, no, no. Can, can I try and pin you down to one highlight? of the event something that's stood out now that you've had a bit of a few days to sort of look back at the week that was and go that really worked for me um well off the top of my head i mean there were so many but i think it was when I arrived at the, the Southern African Wildlife College and I got in through the gate off the main road and they told me where to go and to find reception and follow the sign to reception. And I drove through the second gate, which was there and there I saw all the banners and all of that were up. And there, when I got in, there wasn't a place to park my car, <laughs> you know, and I actually had to uh, ask myself, am I in the right place? <laughs> because surely this little sort of um, gesture to say thanks to the guards couldn't have manifested itself or sort of exploded into something where there's no parking. <laughs> and so I think I was really, really, um, I felt proud, you know, that the guys were getting that type of exposure looked at by that many people and um, that everybody believes in it that much, you yeah. know. So, yeah, it was a really proud moment. Like I said, it's it's mostly due to, to Michelle at Fagasta and her hard work and her connections and, um, putting all of the pieces of the puzzle together to create something like that. But I'm glad I was really pleased to see, like I mentioned earlier, that that was testimony to uh, the idea being worth something. Yeah. Yeah. Mike, thank you so very much for chatting to me. It was great to spend time with you. It always is. Um, and yeah, it's always and good I, to spend time with you too. I wish you all the very best going forward. I hope you have a wonderful year. I look forward to, to hopefully seeing you at Safari Guide of the Year 2023, wherever that may be and yeah. in whatever, um, whatever way it manifests come next year. Okay, great. Thank you.